All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer Escalera. Thank you for joining us for our webinar today. It's October 26, 2016, and I'm here with Greg Beckett. Um, Hi. Hi, Greg. So Greg is a board hypnotist, certified trainer and coach. He's currently the president of the Los Angeles chapter of the National Guild of Hypnotists. And he runs classes on the four agreements. So that's why I had asked him to join me on these uh, monthly webinars. We are um, on our last fourth agreement, but we are going to do one more recap uh, in November. So look out for that. But um, oh, and then I have my four agreement cards that I like to play with. Let me see where they are. Oh, here they are. So throughout the, the webinar, I'd like to just pop in a little question and get an idea of what you think, Greg. And if any of you have a question or a comment that you uh, want to share, please um, share that in the chat and we'll get started. So welcome, Greg. Thanks for joining Hi. me. Yeah, glad to be Hi. here. I'm, act I'm actually in, um, I'm usually coming from Los Angeles to you guys, but I'm in uh, Texas. I saw some clients, I had some family things, so I'm at my brother's, which is kind of cool to be able to do this still and see clients somewhere else and in the country and still get to talk to all of you. So thanks for yes, having me. Yes, yes, yes. So today, uh, part of the fourth agreement is always do your best. So this one is definitely, I mean, they're all very personal to me, but this one is a real stickler for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. It is. So did you want me to bring up what we had started earlier in our conversation? We can, or we can, or you can do the, were you going to do a card first or did you want to jump right in? No, let's do a card first. Okay. All right. Let me randomly select a card. I'm sitting here going, do I look at the dot or do I look at the screen? <laughs> you look at the dot. Okay, always do your best. Surrender and let go of the past. Surrender and let go of the past. Whatever life takes away from you, let it go. When you surrender and let go of the past, you allow yourself to be fully alive in the moment. Letting go of the past means that you can enjoy the dream that is happening right now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, the, um, like I said, I was here in town talking to clients and, and doing some work and that came up a lot. And when I think about the past, I think about, and I like to talk about even for myself, what's the story I'm telling myself when I'm doing something? Oh, I'm not very good at that. Well, maybe I wasn't in the past, but maybe I've done it a half a dozen times now that now I am better, mm -hmm. you know, and, but I keep bringing the story that I'm not good at it. So I'm not going to do it, whether it's, um, you know, painting a room or uh, grocery shopping, cooking, whatever. But everything is a skill that we learn. Some of them we have better than others. And I find it fascinating when, um, and I used to feel this way, but I don't anymore about going to classes and not knowing stuff in a class. And you're afraid to ask questions and stuff. Now I ask all the questions I want because I'm there to learn. What the heck is up with that? Right. You yeah. know, we're always we're supposed to already have the answers that we're not good enough, so we're in a class. How about if we're, we're smart enough to learn something instead, you know, and not bring our past with us? Um, and, and the story that we tell ourselves, um, it's bringing that history or all those judgments into the today. And it's choosing, like, I've seen people that have had all sorts of things happen in their life, whether they've been incarcerated or uh, just, you know, just all sorts of things. And that's an old story because that's not who they are now, but they're judging themselves more than anybody else because they have different friends, different things going on. And they're still seeing themselves as what happened to them and no one else even knows. So they're not living fully by bringing that past into their present. It doesn't mean you forget about it. It doesn't mean you don't have the lessons from it. It's the lessons from it actually that you want to bring with you not the judgment mm -hmm. so that makes sense so that you can be better now that full authentic self without all of that baggage mm -hmm. so can you go into that a little bit more because that's you would need to be conscious to that so what if someone's not there yet how do you bridge that gap of getting them to see that it's well, I, well that like what's a practical what like what's a practical way of doing it is what you're asking me or 
Sure. Like yeah. for me, for, for me and clients, I say, okay, when you're afraid to do something, why? 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 Why are you afraid? Well, you know, I'm never very smart at that. Okay. So try it again or hire someone to do it, work your way around it, whatever it is, instead of worrying about what you're not good at, what are you good at? Or sometimes it, um, I remember um, working uh, in advertising for about 10 years. And when I started, I wasn't trained in advertising and I was pulling a lot of data for clients and I, the work would just pile up. And people would come to me and I didn't understand why they'd come to me. It turned out it's because I was good at what I did, but I thought there's so much work and it's just work. It's just work. And then one day I said, what would I do? Or what's my through line for my life? I was just really sitting at my desk going, what is it I like about my life? What has it been a through line for me since I was a kid and as an adult and stuff? Because I always liked helping people get what they need. And I don't know where that came from. It was like when you, when you really sit to think about yourself sometimes, not about going down the rabbit hole, but thinking, who am I? And, and, and what nourishes me? And so me was helping people get what they need. And I realized my job, then I go, what, how, what, how does it have to do with this job that I'm in right now? And it turned out that I was pulling data to help the account executives and the clients get the results that they needed. And they counted on me to help them get what they needed. And since I realized that's what I was doing actually in my job, it was a snap. I ended up going from a temp to a VP in seven years. It was just, wow. I enjoyed, well, I enjoyed, but I enjoyed the job because I was helping. I looked at it in my viewpoint of helping people get what they need, mm -hmm. not just, Oh, I got to pull this report and I got to do this. I started pulling it two and three different ways because it got easy. It was like a puzzle and I enjoyed puzzles too. So figuring things out and figuring them out or what the client needs or understanding that they don't know how to ask the right questions to get the results because I understood the data. Mm -hmm. And it was helping them understand their business. And yeah. it just became simpler. Yeah. Does that make sense? So yeah. it's really asking yourself, what are you good at? Or how can you turn this into something that's useful for you instead of just doing it begrudgingly? Because if you do it begrudgingly, you're not going to do your best. You're doing it for someone else or for the paycheck, which is fine. You know, we all have to eat and all that kind of stuff. But like, I didn't like my job at the time. I was frustrated until I turned it around with a viewpoint of what I really liked. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a really interesting thing and, and it, it made a, a, a huge difference. So when I don't want to do something or I'm procrastinating, it, it, typically it's fear. What? Fear of what? Well, I might not do it right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> it, it might not be perfect. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's all of us. It's all that, you know, we all, most of us do that. And, and what is really perfect? You know, you might have um, maybe this, the earbud right now, like this for some of you would be perfect, you know, behind your ear and whatever. And for others, it's straight up. But who knows? Everybody's different. It's still perception and, and perspective. There's no such thing as perfect. And it goes back to another part of the four agreements that they were talking about. We're trying to live up to the standards of what people told us who we are. Yeah. You know, who our mothers thought we are and our fathers and our teachers and our preachers and our friends and our family and trying to live up to that per perspective of their viewpoint of their perspective, that perfection of their perspective. Right. Yeah. When really we just have to live up to our own because we're the only ones that we need to satisfy. Because mm -hmm. we're the ones that get misery when we're not doing our best or not living our life, not them. But sometimes they do get miserable because we think we're doing things for them and they're upset that we're not happy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. There's an assumption. Well, I'm doing what you want me to do, but you're not happy. Well, then do what you want to do. Right. Right. Yeah. Sometimes there's this assumption that you're supposed to do what your mom or dad tells you what to do, even though you're an adult now we still are trying to live up to their expectations. So you never really feel like you're good enough or you're not doing your best because there's just this. It's their, it's their perception of it's, what best, best is. Right. right. It's their voice up here that is clouding you from doing something that you fully want to love. Or maybe it's um, someone that you're in a relationship with and they're clouding your your dream your vision of what you want out of life but you're paying closer attention to them than your own inner wisdom right right or 
you're going along with them because you think it's the right thing to do when you're keeping them selfishly think about it selfishly you're keeping them from their lesson if you just live your life yeah yeah so let's because a lot of times a lot of times parents protect their kids they try to give them things and not make the mistakes they did and things like that mm -hmm. and then they're not learning it's not that you want them you give them advice and all that kind of stuff but if you're it's almost like an enabling kind of thing to where they don't get lessons and then here they are 32 years old you know can't keep a job and whatever and you're like what did i do wrong i gave them everything well <laughs> yeah he gave them too much you know, or, you, or you didn't allow them the freedom to make mistakes mistakes mm -hmm. are not bad see that's the judgment mistakes there's no such thing it's just an experience an experience that went to a different place than what you thought it was going to go to mm -hmm. and then you just move from there right right yeah. love it um there's something in the four agreements in that doing your best is that um and i'm reading it right from here because i have it highlighted is that we do um, everything's alive and changing all the time. So your best will sometimes be a higher quality and other times it won't be as good as you expected it to be. But the truth is everything's changing. All we have is change. Life is a flow. And even now I, I, I work on and I even contemplate, okay, how can I get, I think of the flow as a river or whatever, you know, you have in your mind and how can I jump in it and just go along with it and still get what I need or what I think I need, mm -hmm. you know, or what I want actually. Right. And then I get what I need. I try to go for what I want and I get what I need. Right. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But going with the flow because change is constant. And a lot of times we sit in front of the TV and, and there's no movement. Doing your best also involves movement and, and doing things in your life. You get great ideas, great you know, possibilities, but you have to get into your life. You can't just sit around watching TV for hours or start, then you go home, you know, watch TV, have drinks, don't do anything because of the fear of doing it wrong or not good enough, well, you're already not doing it at all. So that's even less than not doing it what you might think is not good enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes, you, by the way, we, we, uh, Jennifer and I spoke just a few minutes before this, just to make sure that all the technical stuff was going from here. And, and she said something about, I can do this, right, Jennifer? Of course, yeah. She said, you know, I worked all, I, 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 what was it? You worked on a video yesterday, right? All you day. You wasted your time, didn't you, all day? I felt like I wasted my time. And I was trying yes. to do more of and it I, before and this. <laughs> and then I, and then I taught, they said, stop right there. We're going to use it today. Can I do that? And she said, yes. So, Jennifer, do you feel like you wasted your time because you didn't get what? Because I didn't get the result I wanted. I needed to make a five to 10 minute video and I kept getting trapped in, in what I wanted to say. So I only got to like two paragraphs out of what I wrote out of the whole video. And that was like five hours, literally five hours. Had to reapply so, my makeup, everything, had to redo my hair. And it's just like, what, oh, you, man, you, you're looking great. for perfection. You're looking for perfection, was, Jennifer? Totally, yes, absolutely. Yes, that's but still look, my shadow. Look, I still have that issue. Yes. But all I want to say is, if you think about it, you could you could use those five hours yesterday, or it could have been five hours today or tomorrow. Maybe you're supposed to use those five hours to learn more about what you don't need versus what you do need. So that teaches what you do need to do. You're getting that learning curve out of the way. You're going to have to do it at some point anyway. Yeah. That's so true. you're in class, basically. You were learning. Mm -hmm. So why beat yourself up and say it was a waste of time mm. is how, what I would say to somebody. Why, why say, oh, I wasted my, no, you didn't. Cause you're going to have to do it sometime. Yeah. You have this idea that if we don't get the exact result, then we are not good or, 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 or judge ourselves as again, wasting time. Right. But we're going to do it anyway. Or you could waste time by not doing it because you're afraid you weren't going to do it right. Yes. You were at least in the doing, so there's no waste of time. Yeah. There's no waste of energy. You were in the doing. That's so that's true. a judgment. Total judgment. And so the, the longer the that the hours kept going by, the more and more I was judging myself and right. not feeling like I was in tune with my whole mission, my whole intention of doing it. I mean, it's to help women. And so... 
I kept losing myself in that whole intention. Like the, there's a purpose for this video. I'm not just sitting in front of a camera and just blabbing. I actually have a story to share with someone. And so I'm trying to make a difference in the world, but I just got caught up in the moment. And today, yes, it's a new day and I'm not going to give up. Um, I will get this video out. <laughs> so. But isn't, isn't this our humanity? Isn't this what we all have going on? Yeah. You know, and it's the judgment that then lost for you. It was a judgment that it wasn't good enough. Oh, I'm not. And then you got it caught up. You said, and you had to find that, that, that story and that giving that you wanted to, because you were judging what you were already giving. Yeah. Well, I noticed it, it took me out of, finding my authenticity i guess like so so basically what it what it is is i have to share a part of my life right now of why my life is so great and it is but mm -hmm. because i'm on a time crunch and my inner credit critic keeps saying this needs to be perfect I can't get into that place of, wow, my life is very good, but it is. So for some of you out there, I'm, I'm just sharing this story. So for some of you out there who, you know, are losing the connection of why your life is good right now, even if it's not like where you want it to be, but maybe it's better than it was five days ago, a year ago or whatever. If you can try to find a way to just, get humble like i'm still going through that like i'm trying to stay grounded and and find the humility out of all of this so that i can connect with my message because my life is good um so the whole thing is having a great life doesn't mean there aren't issues and there's not learning that's part of having a great life yeah oh maybe i could say you that <laughs> but that's part of having a great life because it seems to me or what I'm, I'm, I'm learning and seeing with other people is that it's when we're growing that we're happiest. Yeah. When we're, when we're, when we have movement, when there's change mm -hmm. and unless, unless it's fear that you're attached to, then you don't do anything and say, Oh, I'm happy just sitting at home watching TV. Are you really, really, you know, <laughs> Right. I, I, I've had this idea for years, but I'm not going to do it. I'm okay with not doing it. Okay. But why do you still have the idea? Maybe you'll never accomplish it, but maybe just even starting it teaches you or makes you go somewhere else in your life. And then you start getting happier or greater life. Trust me. I got stuff. We all got stuff. <laughs> you know, and we're always looking to listen to this, the people that, that are on TV or even us or whatever YouTube that don't have anything wrong. Oh my God, that's the last person I want to yeah, talk to. Yeah, that's true. That's right. I got, some, got some stuff going on. I'll say, yeah, and here I'm doing it, or you help me. Let's figure it out. You know. So, right. um, so doing your best is is a lot about getting into it. Like you were spending all that time. That's doing your best. And look what's coming out of it. We're talking about it now. You're having other ideas. I'm listening to you, going, oh, I need to start doing my stuff that I want to do online. You know, it just helps each other out. Mm -hmm. so maybe your yesterday of what you thought was wasting your time is helping me to get something done. Just having this conversation about it. Mm, thank you. Yeah. We, we, don't, we don't know what it does for other people. Maybe you going, or let's say I do a video and I stumble over my words. I just say, forget it. I'm going to put it out there. That's who I am. And someone else goes, I like that. I stumble too. That's okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Come on, there's so much going on right now. There's so much tension in this world and, and anticipation and because of the date it is and elections coming and uncertainty, can't we just be certain that we're okay just how we are, you know, and growing forward instead right. of having that perfection that media and society and family puts on us. Mm -hmm. The media is awful that way. Right. I will yeah. never look like Kim Kardashian, okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> or Brad Pitt. I'll be nice. Right. Or Brad Pitt. <laughs> right. Does that make me a loser? <laughs> right. <laughs> or a bigger winner. I don't know. <laughs> or a bigger winner. Yeah. yeah. You know, something else about perfection um, and about doing your best is 
people think they need to get everything done. And for a lot of people, especially working parents and people with a lot of friends and family that people count on them, they think getting everything done for everyone else is their best. Hmm. That they're supposed to do everything for everyone else. Oh, I got to get my granddaughter here. I got to get my sons, pick up my sons this or do this for my child or, or get the work done and get my husband's stuff done or get my wife's stuff done. You know, whatever it is, you know, the yard, the yard's got to be swept up or raked up, things like that. And, and then you don't take time for any joy for yourself. Right. And that's not really your best either, is it? I mean, because some of those people are, are coming to you because you'll say yes you will sacrifice your joy and your best to make sure that they're happy. Mm -hmm. What about making yourself happy? Right. So if that so would, mm -hmm. go ahead. Sorry. No, go, no, no, go ahead. I was just thinking, so that would be a tip for people who get into that mode of always doing for everyone, but themselves is the that. Pleasers, like <laughs> I was. Or yes. sometimes still am occasionally I go, why am I doing this? I don't even want to. Yeah. I don't, time I got things to do for myself right right so yeah. a tip could be that well are you really doing your best for your, to yourself right you know? because what I talk about and I like to talk about oops she looked my earbud fell let's get oops. back on here hi that was perfect <laughs> timing it's a beautiful thing yeah uh, <laughs> um I, I I grew up hearing this um and many of you may have or may not it's a charity begins at home oh uh-huh and, and I think about charity beginning at home is your body, who you are, your soul is home. Mm -hmm. And as you take care of yourself, then you're stronger to then include your family, whether it's birth family, biological or friend family or whatever you consider your family and then your community and then more and more. But you have to, it starts here. Look, I mean, I'll raise my chest right in, you know, right here in your core soul part of you of, of that Charity begins at home because once you're taken care of, you have less worry. You can help other people, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes helping other people is what makes you feel good. So you need some of that to help that charity begins at home is also helping other people. It's what, what you need. It's taking care of what you need and want. Mm -hmm. to be fulfilled. So whether it's playing a musical instrument or, or, or donating your time or painting or, uh, running a marathon and getting in shape, any of those things. Mm -hmm. Everyone, I realized I was thinking about this yesterday. We're all just trying to do the best we know how already to be happy, whatever that is. And I think it's a lot more simplistic, our happiness than what we think it is. I, I, I get the feeling that everybody's trying to be that happy, that, TV and celebrity and sports figures and stuff think is what happy, you know, we think that them is happy because they're doing that, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, businessmen that are traveling the world or, you know, all those sorts of things. And I think it's much more simpler than that of just doing what you really enjoy and being grateful. Mm. So, so it allows more to come in. Right. And, and, you know, I, I sit here and, and think about, I'm here in Texas and I'm here because of some family things too, but I get to see clients and it's, and it's, I'm just so grateful that for my family, you know, I never thought maybe 15 or 20 years ago that I'd be as grateful as I am now. And it's just that I found that we, I have an elderly parent that we have to move and things like that. And everybody's just working together. Um, and, and it's amazing. You know, because it's not people that I've hung out with all the time. Oh, the years we have. And we get together every couple of years in a reunion. We talk now more as we get older and more mature. But how simple just having someone agree with you or disagree and explain why in a nice manner to take care of our elder. Mm -hmm. That's happiness. That's happiness and gratitude and, and appreciation that you can count on that. Because many of you don't or can't possibly and then there's many of you that build your own families that you can have that and you know and if you don't have it then you find other people that you can right. I, I don't know where i'm going with that but it's just i think it's a lot more simple than all the stuff we need where we think we need because right. in the end 
it's all going to somebody else. <laughs> we're, we're cleaning out a space that's got plenty that doesn't get used. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's our experiences and how we feel mm -hmm. that really, you know, connect us and give us some sort of okay with as things are. Or right. want to do better, but what we think is better, not everybody else. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the ramble. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, that's good. Uh, I had um, something else that I wrote down that I wanted to talk about. Is uh, sometimes I have people come in. I do this at this time. I they're, they're very scheduled and stuff, and they're happy for the most part, but they want to find more time for themselves, and I. I there was this word that came to her, this phrase is what about unregimented joy? Hmm. What's Un that? Unregimented joy. It's where, you know, people schedule their fun. They schedule what oh. they think is fun. Well, how about not scheduling and just allowing out of your typical schedule to do something fun, whether it's if you're driving down the road and then you see a park and it, you still have 30 minutes on your lunch, that you stop and get on the swing just because. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a hell's odd. Or, you know, depending upon where you live, you know, stop at the animal shelter and go pet a couple of cats or dogs or, or you keep a fishing rod in the back of your trunk and, and you stop and just do a few casts somewhere if that's your area. You know, and, mm -hmm. you just, and you go, oh, I got to do that for 10 minutes. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Or you maybe know? just, you know, you're driving in your car because there's traffic and you sing a song and, yeah. you know. You just or you pull over it. and you go to the movie till traffic's over. <laughs> you right. never get, let's say you never, let's say, let's say you don't have a lot of responsibility that day at home. Maybe if you, you don't have kids or your spouse is out of town or or the kids are older, whatever, and you're driving home, it's a traffic jam, there's the movie theater, mm -hmm. and you haven't been able to go to the movies, go to the movies, and then go home. Either way, you're spending time either in the traffic or after the traffic, and you spend the time in a movie instead. Right. You know? I don't know. It's just finding solutions to find our happiness instead of being stuck in the perfection and what, how it's supposed to be. There's no such thing. Right. There's no there's no promise of any of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know. So finding the solutions. Yeah. So that whatever you do, you're doing it with some joy. You're figuring out. And it's, I think it's kind of exciting to find a solution when you've been stuck on something of, of, Oh, because when you're doing your best, and this is what we're really talking about when you're doing your best, you don't beat yourself up. You don't judge yourself. So then I take, then I look at that because that's simplistic. And then you go, okay, where else do I judge myself? Oh, I didn't get home on time. I didn't, I don't have time for myself. You know, we, that, cause that's kind of what we were talking about. So then you just find the solutions for those things mm -hmm. and not put so many restrictions on what the answer can be. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, uh, gym, uh, you know, the gym meaning working out. I, I live a few blocks from a gold gym. I finally joined. I went for a while to the yoga classes and then I pulled something in my foot and I was like, eh. And I have a small swimming pool. I can't swim laps. Oh, it sounds like I live a good life. I got oh, a swimming pool. The gym. Yes. Ooh, yeah. California. <laughs> so, so some neighborhood kids are swimming this summer and I realized I grew up swimming and I loved swimming and I go, oh, the YMCA is about a mile from my house. I think I'm going to join the Y. Someone says, eh, you know, it's kind of old and stuff. I'm like, I'm not going to listen to them. That's their perspective. I don't live in their house, you know? So I went and I joined, but I thought, oh my gosh, I can't pay for two memberships at the same time. I can't afford that. Mm -hmm. That's a waste of money, right? Yeah. That's like not being, that not doing my best. That's a waste of money, right? Right. So then I go, but wait a minute. I'm the one that's creating my whole life. I think I deserve a chance to figure out what would be best for my health and what do I enjoy? So I said, okay, for three months, I'll pay you two memberships and whichever one I use the most, uh, that's the one I'll keep. So I'm in month two and I don't think I've gone to golds at all. Just like I wasn't, I could walk there. And I've actually at this point started riding my bike, swimming a half a mile or whatever and riding back. And it gives me joy that I can do that. But I had to allow myself to not do it the way everybody thinks you have to do it. You can't spend extra money. You can't do this. You can't do that which actually I'm getting more done because I'm getting healthier. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, Greg. I said, yes, Greg, 
you are the focus of all of this. This is your life. You want to spend that way. You want to do whatever it is, you know, and you had a purpose and now you, and you have an end of when you're going to make that choice, but I didn't have to make that choice right away. I used to think, okay, let me quit that one and join this one. Yeah. And then cost stress. What am I making the wrong choice? Right. Okay, so let's do it another way. Let's just take both of them. Right, right. I like that. So that's another tip. So when it's not even about judging where you're at with your self-worth or your confidence, it's just saying, okay, I'm going to make an agreement that I'll do this thing for like a month or two. Of whatever it is. Of whatever it is. It's not like I have to go. It's let's see where I go. Let's just see. Right. And be open. And it turns out I like going to the, what they call run down. I think it's okay. It's a gym. It's what you grew up in going to the YMCA if you went to or right. whatever neighborhood stuff. It's not fancy schmancy and there's not a lot of, you know, the right clothes to work out and all that. It just, it's just people. It's right. cool. So let's say so. that, let's say that you're a working mom who mm-hmm. is constantly just very busy you know, right. boom, 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 right. gotta go, 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 be on the right. go, be on the go. And let's just say the plan or the goal is for the next, what, two weeks that they're going to cut out some of that stuff so that they can start working on doing what's the best for them. Mm-hmm. Or what well, would be? Are you, are you, well, okay, let's say, but what's really the goal? Because that's not a goal. What is it they need? They need more time for themselves they need to work out. Rest. What is Let's the just goal? Say rest. Okay. Sleep. So then how do we find more rest or more sleep? You still have the kids. How old are the kids? Are they toddlers? Are they teenagers? Are they, you know, um, so you have to look at what is, what is their, what is, what, what are all the activities that keep them go, go, going? What is the benefit for them to get rest? How can they be even better at that? What they're doing now once they are rested, right? Mm-hmm. Or, or, how, let's say the kids are young. Who do I know that also needs rest? Another friend that's a mom that's always go, go, go. The kids get along. You know what? Mondays and Wednesday, Monday and Wednesday afternoons, I'll take the kids for three hours for you. Tuesday and Thursday for the next couple of weeks, you take them for me and we both get to take naps. But we promise each other that we'll take naps during that time or read a book or a bubble bath. Yeah. You have also some sort of accountability with each other to help each other relax. Mm-hmm. So you know, you get take, the support. You get just figure out solutions. Right, support and solutions. Mm. If you have no one, you say, okay, baby, we're going to take a bath together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or whatever it is. Here's your toys. You sit there. Mom's going to be in the bath. You know, whatever it is, it's about finding solutions, compromises. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to all get, it's all in or all out. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be that way. Right. It's not all in or all it's out. It's just a matter of, you know, and it's just a matter of, 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 of doing what you like to do, um, finding ways. Like I don't like, you know, like I said, I, I'm going to just. I don't like lifting weights that much. It's not my thing. But swimming, it just hit me. I was in the pool with the kid. I like this. Why don't I swim? Mm-hmm. Because the pool's too small. Okay, so where is there one? Where's the one that I would enjoy going to? What's the atmosphere? And you just go towards it. It's movement. It's movement. Right. It's past thought. Right. So we get caught up in our thoughts. And it's, you know, it's, it, the other thing is, is about, you know, you're expressing who you are when you take action. Some of us are afraid to express who we are, to show other people who we are so we don't take action. Whether it's... Um, speaking our minds or, or um, trying to sell our art, whatever it is, if you don't take that action and you're not expressing yourself, um, you know, hi, okay, hi. I, I was just going on anyway. And I was talking about I, habits and I was getting ready. I know, we're going to talk about, <laughs> we're going to talk about habits and rituals a little bit, you know, about once you learn what your best is, then implement it. You know, implement it when you can, when you already know the things that you like. I bet you all of you that are listening, either now or later, you know three or four things that you like or enjoy that you don't allow yourself to do. And that goes to worthiness too. Aren't you worth all of this? Mm. Aren't you deserving of 
doing your best and being okay with it without having the judgment. Right. There's so many of those words that we don't realize that we starve ourselves. We, what's the word? I don't want to use the word discipline, but we, we really just starve ourselves for the things that we want. We hold it back from ourselves. No one else. No one else is holding it back. Hmm. And it, what you put attention to is what's going to come. So if you're putting your attention on what everybody else needs, that's what's going to come. And as soon as you get in that cycle, then you don't even see what you need until you're finally overloaded and exhausted. And so nothing is ever your best. You start, then you start beating yourself up even more. Mm hmm I like that, starving so, yourself. Yeah, so then it's about what do you want, not what you don't want. Because you're gonna say, I don't want this. I don't wanna do this for everybody. Great, great, you got that. But now, whenever you say, I don't want something, change it to what you do want. I don't wanna do this for everybody else. What do you want? I want more time for myself. How much time? Or I want to go fishing. Okay, when, how often? Or, or even minimally, you know, what's the minimum for you? But you gotta ask for what you want so that your source, God, universe, whatever it is for you, can start bringing that to you instead of trying to bring what you don't, you can't get what you don't want. Yeah, I'd like to um, ask everyone who can participate right now, if you can write in the chat, what is something that you've been holding back on that you can just announce to the group right now that you, can see yourself planning or setting a goal for yourself. You know, what kind of agreement can you make from today and put a timeline on it, I guess? I mean, Are you talking about like a 30 day thing? Like if they were to change something for themselves yeah, to like now if, the next time we meet? So if there's something, yeah. So like if there's something that you've been thinking about, but you're like, no, I just don't have the time or, oh, I'm too tired or I, I just- Or I I'm not good or I'm not good enough. Yeah. Or I just, yeah, exactly. So it's, you know, it's private. Just put it in the chat or email me. And I'd love to hear what, what you're thinking about. What is that one thing that you've been holding back on? And just announce it right now. Um, put it in the chat. Um, you can even say private, but I know what it is. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So if it's private, it's private, but I know what it is, you know, meaning yeah. yourself. Right. So, so let's give a specific what it's supposed to look like in case someone does, isn't clear. So they're going to say what? Like, oh, you're, you're asking me? Yeah. Like, um, I mean the private one or the non-private one? Not either okay. one. Look, we got, we, we got one who is public and, um, what, Ooh, oh, okay. I like these. These are great. Mm -hmm. So joining a dance class. Great. So what would it take for you to join a dance class? Even by the action of looking up ones in your area, or maybe you work far from home, like you commute, maybe going right after work and then the traffic dies down. What's a good way or time outside of your regular thinking? It has to be in the morning or afternoon or whatever it is allowing yourself to come up with the idea of when's best, what areas, what kind of dance class. That's even our ready movement. Mm -hmm. And then we have, I want to be able to ask for a raise. So let, I'm, I'm curious and I'm going to talk because I know there's not a lot of back and forth, but what keeps you afraid? Are you afraid that they're going to say no? Now, the best thing about them saying no is, well, what would it, if they say no and they say, not right now, we can't afford it, you can always ask, I love this backup when I would do that, what do I need to do in order to, to, to merit the raise if you don't feel like I merit one? Mm -hmm. Because they're saying no and they always have a reason, well, then what, what changes do we, see, it's not, it's not sticking with the negative, it's going to the positive, great, I understand that you're saying right now is not able, because see, we feel stuck that we're going to ask for a raise and they're going to say no. And then that's the end of it. And we're going to lose our job or, or whatever it is. Or, or, but if you put it in a way of, if, since we can't do it now, when's a good time to bring it up again? And what are the steps that need to be taken so that I can get this raise? Mm -hmm. Because then you're not left in the dark about 
um, what needs to be done. A lot of times when you're working for a company, they leave you in the dark. And I think, who's that that wrote that? Oh, PSC, hi. Um, I think you've been, that's been on your mind for a while, I'm guessing. I don't know why I'm saying that, but I think it's been on your mind for a while. So what would it take for you to have the courage to know that you deserve? And are you willing that if they start, you realize that they, you don't, you're not being honored, how can you honor yourself, whether it's looking for something else or making money in another way that brings you more joy? Or do you love what you do? And you find someone else that loves the way you do it. Yeah. A lot of times, I don't know if you're in corporate or not, but I know a lot of times in corporate America, once you've been there a while, it's kind of difficult. Because um, you, when you start somewhere, they pay you more than what you're worth. After three years, you're already making what you're worth and a little bit more, and then you have to go in and ask. And their job as a company is to pay you less. Typical. That's typical thinking. Mm -hmm. So that they can make more profit. Now, a really good company wants to pay you more because then you will bring them more. Right. Like Google. And Right. So, well, you know, so then, so you want to look for those type of people if you decide to move some of that really, you know, mm -hmm. but don't block yourself in to where you think if I don't get this raise, I'm going to be miserable. Ask them, make it a challenge for yourself to ask even more because you're speaking up again. I understand I can't have it. Can I have partial of it? Can we look at, when can we look at it again? What do, needs to be done to merit this in your eyes? Mm-hmm. That way you're not, again, left blind of, oh, I wasn't good enough. In their estimation. And remember, their job is to not give you money. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's their job in some ways, in some companies, keeping costs down. Right. I wish I knew more what you did. So, we could so do you want to share a little bit more about what you do or if there's still questions? Um, and this would be the time we have about seven more minutes. This would be the time for if you have a question and you need clarity around it, um, please put it in the chat or email me, jenescalera at gmail.com. Just gonna- I wanna say real quick, cause I didn't, I, I, I we kind of, you were, you were so kind to let me talk about all sorts of stuff that, that goes into doing your best. Um, but by doing your best, it's also by doing the other agreements, the best you know how and watching that grow and not beating yourself up because you took something personally and not, be, and not judging yourself because you, did, you made an assumption. It's just the knowing that you made an assumption is sometimes enough because then you can rectify right. or know that next time I'm not going to ask, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to ask next time. Right. So doing your best with the agreements is important. Mm. that's not an overnight i've been reading this book for 15 years yeah i know or whatever it's been you know and every time i talk about it something new comes up and it's it's fascinating i see it in a different way so we never stop growing and so just doing your best if i wow i could never be who i am today eight years ago because that's what we, we expect of ourselves. Right. Everything at once. Right. So it just takes time and to be patient. And, you know, I, you know what? I'm going to use the gym analogy again. Um, I was driving to the gym and I looked up on, on Google Maps. It turned out it's only a mile away. And I said, I don't want to start riding my bike because I don't want to park. I don't want to, you know, it's a hassle. And so I packed my stuff in my backpack to go swimming. And I said, all right, I'm going to ride my bike that mile. I haven't ridden my bike in a while. And if I'm too tired, that's okay. I can go home and not swim because then I would have rode a mile there and a mile back. <laughs> that's two miles more than I would have done and only swim a half a mile. Right. So, so I didn't have any issue or, or, you know, it was okay. And then next time I would go, I'd be used to riding and I'd build up that way. And so I ended up, I got there. It wasn't as far as I thought. I swam. And it's sort of downhill coming home, a slight in decline. So it was easy coming home. So it was like, it was okay if I did, and it was okay if I didn't, because I was doing the best. Right, right. Without judging it. Right. So that, and then I use that as an analogy of, you know, whatever it is you want to do. Maybe writing the things down of, of why you're good at your job and you deserve a raise is just like me riding the bike. And maybe I won't ask tomorrow. But then I'll read it some more and I'll understand better and get more um, facts and things of why I think I deserve it. 
mm-hmm. and then go with them with that. You don't have to do it in one day. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do it in one week. But know that something's pushing you because you know you deserve more. Right. So I'd like to ask those people who volunteered um, what they've been thinking about and what they are willing to, to try. Um, I'd like to know when do you want to, to do it? So what's the date that you want to join your class or what's the day that you want to ask for the raise? And go ahead and put it in the chat. It's just, it's just us, you know, it's just us. or you could just put it to the panelists so it's private. Um, that's okay too. And we won't announce your name or anything, but I just want to hear if you can set a date for yourself, not judge it, but you're just putting it in your calendar and on that day you're going to be or, doing- what, or sooner you buy that day if i can say that or buy that day it okay it doesn't have to be on that day it could be before it could be oh yeah you know yeah because life is ever changing yes let me show you something really quick i have to go get it though hold on So one way that I keep myself accountable and I can visualize is I use a calendar. And can you see it? Yes. Okay, so that's what keeps me accountable. Like today, you know, the four agreements. Friday is when I have to send out emails to my affiliates for a program I'm launching. And then to make me double accountable, is I use a planner. <laughs> so I have my notes to make sure I have all my deadlines, all my goals, and I'm not judging myself. I'm not um, questioning whether I can do it or not. I'm just put, I'm plugging in dates and see if I can create a map uh, or a road that will get me to that destination, that will get me to the Yay, Maria gave us November 14th, yay. Okay, yay, That's awesome. a good time frame. You that know. is a very good time frame. I, I been, I'm gonna throw something else out, is I found myself procrastinating on some things, like I tend to do at times, and I played a lot of solitaire. And I realized <laughs> solitaire was a way for me to get out of my head, because I was in my head too much. People know that solitaire game, Spider, Candy Crush, oh, whatever yeah. it is. Right. It was just card games. And then one day I, was, I kept getting angry that I was playing solitaire. And then a couple of days later, I finally said, you know what? I'm doing this because it's something I need to do and I'm not going to judge it. And I love myself anyway. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to love myself that I'm doing this and it's okay because there's some reason why I'm not doing what I, I really want to do. And within two or three days, it took away the need or the desire to play like I was playing in that frantic, you know, okay, game's over, next one, game's over, next one, you know, it took that away to where I could do other things. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't mad at myself to make myself even more mad. Right. (laughs) You know, I was doing the best I could was to play solitaire. That's the best I could. Yeah. Because sometimes we have some heavy stuff or that's a way of our brain doing other things at subconscious, working things out and you go, oh my God, what am I even doing? I know what I can do now. Yeah. So much going on. So taking away that judgment right. is really important. Just letting yourself in wait because it's the best you can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Well, we are out of time. It's one o'clock and I just want to make one observation. So am I, can you hear me? I just yep. want to make one observation um, if anyone else has noticed, but when I hear you talk, Greg, about how you process your situations, you're, you're like your own best self coach. You know, you, you're gentle to yourself you're, or you're just like, you're just real with yourself. And so I, I do the same thing. Like I have to listen to that voice and encourage myself to keep moving forward. Or if I'm blocked, I have to figure out, well, what am I going to do? So for those of you who don't have that um, kind of inner coach inside of you, I want to challenge you and see how you can create that for yourselves. Because as you can see, just an observation, Greg, I can see how it 
helps you to make a difference in your life, you know, because you're not staying stuck. You're actually like coaching yourself to love yourself. Right. So, <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I think that's a beautiful thing. So Thank you. I hope everyone can um, take that as a lesson for themselves too and, and to make your life a lot easier. So I want to thank you, Greg, for joining us again for your beautiful wisdom. And this is our fourth agreement. This is the last agreement out of the four agreements. And um, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time, the hour out of uh, the month to share with us, you know, your perspective or your perception of what the four agreements are so that you can help make other people's lives um, easier and, and calmer and more in control. Um, and so next month, we're going to just be recapping what we've been talking about, all of the four agreements. And if there's questions or there's still another month for you to finish up the book, if you haven't finished it, um, any other? It would be cool if people came with and we had a bit of a discussion with the chat on the side. And they uh -huh. talk about what they've been doing and how it's changed or where they've been stuck with the four agreements and ask how that we make it a little bit more interactive. Not that we're not doing a great job because we are, but it would be fun to see if people can come up with a little bit more stuff for their own personalized things and maybe either send it in ahead or use the chat. Yeah. More like a and a type thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll still talk about everything, but how have they used it and how yeah. has it changed? Yeah. Made a difference? Can we make it like a virtual potluck since it's lunchtime? <laughs> what you going to make? <laughs> I'll make my own lunch, but you'll have to bring your own too. <laughs> I'm going to cool. just throw that out. We'll all be snacking. <laughs> we can snack. We can bring our own uh, food. I have Cheetos fingers. <laughs> ah, the, the flaming Hot Cheetos? <laughs> no, not hot. Not hot, but Cheetos. <laughs> Got it. Um, okay, well, how can we continue learning more about you, Greg, or what are you up to? Uh, I am, uh, you can be my friend on Facebook if you want to. Oh. Hypnosis LA or um, Gregory Sarton Beckett. Um, you can reach me in LA, 310-288-7865. I do um, online Skype sessions or in-person sessions and uh, hypnosisla.com. And you can go there to sign up for my uh, newsletter that I am sending out. Are you? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm finally learning how to use the constant contact stuff better. And so I'm ready to start sending some things out. And um, some of them may even be copies of what we're doing today, but you know, yeah. that will be coming. So feel free to reach out and greg at hypnosisla.com. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you, you everyone for joining us live and for those who will be listening to this later on the recording and uh, we'll see you next month. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>